Hey everyone, welcome back to Clinical Physio with me, Khalid Maidan. Today's video is called Interpretation of Reflex Tests, and in particular, Tendon Reflex Tests. And it's been created to explain the meaning behind the different reflex responses that your patient may demonstrate on testing. So let's get into it. So first, how do we classify our patient's reflex responses? Well, they may be absent, i.e. no response, hyporeflexive, i.e. very little response, normal, you can guess what that one means, or hyperreflexive, i.e. an exaggerated response. And we're going to go through these individually. So, an absent, i.e. no response, or a hyporeflexive, i.e. very little response. This can occur if there is a lesion of the sensory or motor pathways involved in the tendon being tested. Let's break that down a bit further. So, a sensory lesion or a motor lesion? Let's take the sensory lesion component. If the sensory receptors in my biceps tendon are working so poorly that the message to say that the tendon has been tapped during the test is struggling to get from the tendon up towards the spinal cord, we will get an absent or a hyporeflexive response on testing. Let's take a motor lesion pathway issue. So let's say the responding motor message from the spinal cord down to the muscle is not going through very well. That means that the message from the spinal cord to tell the biceps muscle to pull the tendon that's been tapped is not going through. And therefore, again, our patient may well demonstrate a poor reflex response on testing. Let's put that into more context, but using the Achilles tendon example. So, as we said, there could be a lesion of the sensory or the motor pathways involving the Achilles tendon, which is going to produce an absent, i.e. no, or hyporeflexive, very little response. So, sensory problem. If the sensory receptors in the Achilles are not functioning, the message is not going through from the Achilles up to the spinal cord to say that the tendon has been tapped. Poor response on the test. Or motor problem. If the message from the spinal cord going down to the gastrocnemius to tell the gastrocnemius to pull the Achilles tendon is not going through, then again, we're not going to get a very good response on testing. So what are some examples of when this might actually happen in practice? Let's say, again, in relation to the Achilles, someone has had an Achilles tendon rupture. The stretch reflex in their Golgi tendon organs may not be very sufficient to elicit the reflex. Hence, this may well present as a hypo or very little response. Or let's say we're thinking about a nerve compression. Now there may be a local nerve compression around one of the nerves peripheral in the leg, or it might be due to a spinal nerve compression, and both of those can contribute to a poor reflex. For example, a reduced ankle reflex may be as a result of a local compression to the tibial nerve, or a spinal compression of the S1, S2 nerve root. The most common reason for tendon reflex testing in musculoskeletal practice is to detect spinal pathology, particularly in relation to an absent or hyporeflexive response. However, you must always be aware that a reduced tendon reflex may not only be due to a spinal problem, as we've highlighted above with the Achilles tendon rupture, because, as we said, for example, there could be a peripheral nerve lesion. So next, a normal reflexive response. Well, as it sounds, this means that there is no interruption of the normal reflex mechanisms between the tendon being tested and the spinal cord. The left-sided reflex is normal, and so is the right-sided reflex, and they are both equal. We can therefore tick that particular reflex as being healthy as a part of our objective assessment. Now, onto a hyperreflexive, or an exaggerated response. If this is elicited bilaterally, then this is a sign of an upper motor neuron lesion, i.e. a lesion anywhere along the pathway from the brain down to the bottom of the spinal cord. So if we are thinking about an upper motor neuron lesion, we're thinking of a central issue. And that's why both the right-sided and left-sided reflexes will be affected during our testing. If the lesion is below the spinal level affecting the upper limbs, for example, a central spinal tumor at L1, 
then it is likely that the hyperreflexive changes will occur only in the lower limbs when we test them. And that's because everything above L1 is still functioning well. But the pathways at or below L1 are now dysfunctional. And that's why we see problems manifest at and below this level during our testing. On the other hand, if the lesion is higher, so for example, a lesion in the brain or a central cord compression at the C2 level, then it is likely that the upper and lower limbs will all present as hyperreflexive or exaggerated during our testing. And that's because everything below the lesion will be effective. So that includes the left and right sided triceps reflexes at the C7, C8 level, and it also includes the left and right sided patellar reflexes at the L3 or 4 level. And that demonstrates why all the reflexes will be affected in that particular example. So, with all that in mind, the two most common abnormal reflex test outcomes in musculoskeletal practice are number one, a unilateral hyporeflexive response, or number two, a bilateral hyperreflexive response. Let's give a quick example of this. So, a unilateral hyporeflexive response may occur if we have a nerve root lesion at a particular spinal level. So, for example, the patellar reflex occurs at the spinal level L3, L4. So if our patient has a normal patellar reflex on the right side, but an absent or hyporeflexive response on the left side, this may be a sign of a left-sided L3, L4 nerve root compression. As for a bilateral hyperreflexive response, as we said above, this is going to be a sign of an upper motor neuron lesion, such as if our patient has a brain tumor. Finally, a couple of things to finish this video off. Remember that reflexes can be hyperreflexive when our patient is under increased stress, tension or anxiety. So if, for example, our patient has had a really bad day and they're very stressed and lots is going on in their life, or if they are really gripping the plinth when you're doing your testing, you may find that the reflexes are hyperreflexive. Also remember that if you have found bilateral hyperreflexia and you suspect an upper motor neuron lesion, you are expecting an exaggerated response supported by other findings such as a positive clonus or gait disturbance when you test these particular things. So everyone, that's it from us. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again soon right here on Clinical Physio.